Hey, it's a beautiful day. <clears throat> that's my wife's little chihuahua. And that's, that's my pit bull. His name's Toothless. And <clears throat> this video is going to be about taking good care of your dogs. And I know y'all think that this might be a boring video and you're probably about to click the button right now but I'm fixing to tell you something that will blow your mind so oh and by the way if you like any of my videos I know that and I'll make this quick I know that I don't work very much but you know changing oil and changing brakes and uh, walking through a pile of mess every day I don't think is very interesting so that's why I'm waiting on life to happen you know I don't know what I'm gonna do just one of the things good things come to those who wait and good things also come to those who stand up for what's right and that's what this video is about but anyway back to the uh, dogs um, I wanted to tell y'all about dog food that is very bad for your dogs I'm going to give you some brand names out there some of them have uh, just caused cancer other ones have got a deadly drug in it that is used to euthanize dogs with and the only way that dog food can get the drug that euthanize dogs in the dog food is by the dog food companies out there cutting up dead dogs and mixing it in with their dog food and uh, that's just it's going through courts right now and everything I'm just taking the safety precautions uh, but, uh, anyways, <clears throat> this brand of dog food right here clearly states on the, on the label, Life Protection Formula. Hello, baby. How you doing? You gotta let daddy, you gotta let me film this video so I can protect you. Come on. Come on. I gotta protect your ancestors, or uncles, or whatever you want to call them. But anyway, this one says Life Protection formula this one specifically has the same chemical in it that is used to euthanize dogs with this is another brand with chicken and life source bits that just blows my mind You've got a pretty dog on the cover trying to tell you that if you feed your dogs this food that it's going to help your dog's life, it, your life, your dog's lifespan live longer. It's going to help them, which is a load of crap. Those dog foods that I just showed you, those two right there, that's the only way that it can get in there, and that's why they're in the middle of a lawsuit right now. Don't ask me. That just blows. It just burns. It just burns me up, man. I just don't get it, man. How people could go out there and print that crap on their label. And, and, and uh, claim to be life-saving. Life-saving. It's just, uh, you know, just burns my ass a new one. But anyway, I wanted to go with y'all through a couple of things about the, all the other dog foods. And I got them written down here. Uh, Alpo. Don't feed your dog Alpo. That one has the same chemical in it that I was telling you about in the dead dog thing. Kibbles and Bits, Gravy Train, Old Roy. That one, all all of those dog foods right there have the chemical in it that, the same chemical that causes, I mean, they put the dog asleep, they take the dog over here. I don't know it's mind-blowing, but look at it, look at it, look it up online. You'll see the footage. It's there. Dig, dig, dig deep enough and you'll find it. <clears throat> Uh, the ones that are recalls because they cause cancer are Blue Buffalo, uh, man, I, man, I just lost all my paperwork, Blue Buffalo, I guess that's the only one I got written down that I, that I did the, 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 the thing on, oh, Blue Buffalo and Alpo. And uh, I don't know if the kibbles and bits ones is uh, the 
the one that either causes cancer or the one that... But anyway, my point is, these are bad dog foods to give your dog. Alpo, Kibbles and Bits, Gravy Train, Old Roy, Blue Buffalo, okay? And if you're poor like I am, the best thing to buy your dog... <laughs> I'm not poor, poor. But I, I'm, I'm not well off right now. I used to be... Uh, I used to be real wealthy, and it got taken away from me real quick for reasons I won't go into them right now, because I'm still, uh, still trying to change my life around. But anyway, uh, anyway, I'll just, I shouldn't even said that, man. I'm, I'm, I'm so embarrassed of where I've been in my life and the things that I've done in my life, and uh, I'm only trying to make a difference out here. But anyway, if you, if you're, if you're well off, buy Nulo. Uh, pedigree is a good one. It's not as expensive. Wellingness, milk bones are okay. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to put that out to y'all, you know. And 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 uh, I didn't, I didn't used to give my dog shots or anything. I had three dogs in my life. The first one I had that I loved very much, and I didn't know what it was. What it, what, it, what I didn't know what I had until it was gone. His name was Bud. And the reason why he got the name Bud was because he, I adopted him and he followed me onto the job site. I never had to chain the dog up. I never had to box him up. I had never had to pin him up. He came with me to the job site every day. I could leave and go to lunch and tell him, watch the house. And no chain at all. He would stay there. If I left him, wherever I left that dog, he stayed. <laughs> Poor guy. I forgot. And, uh left him on the job site one night and I shot up at two o'clock in the morning and I said, Oh my God, honey, I left the dog on the job site. And I cried and bawled like a, like a little crybaby sissy all the way there. And when I got there, he was standing on the front porch. He wasn't very happy. <laughs> he wouldn't come to me and give me sugars. When I opened that truck door, I owned a, I owned a big old panel van. I rolled the door. Whoosh, here he, here he come running in the truck. And I said, come here, baby. He didn't even walk up to me. He went to the back of the truck. He wouldn't, he wasn't happy with me at all. But anyway, that dog ended up... I'm telling you these things for a reason, man. Because there, there are people out there that probably do the same things that I've done. So anyway, that dog died of kidney failure. And the reason why a dog died of kidney failure is because every day, everybody... You know, I kept the cooler pretty much filled with beer and Dr. Pepper. And one day, uh, one of my co-workers said, Hey, why don't you name him Bud? Because we was trying to figure out a name for him. I said, man, you got to be kidding me. I'm not going to name him Bud after Budweiser. He goes, no, man, look. And the guy threw down a Frisbee and poured Coors Light in it. And that was his favorite Frisbee. And then the guy, uh, then we put down in the uh, just a regular old bowl, uh, makeshift bowl. I forget what it was. It was something that held water at the time. And he poured Budweiser in it. He went to his favorite Frisbee where we always gave him water on or wherever we, whatever we decide to feed the dog that day to drink. <laughs> Dr. Peppers and Bud Weiser is what you fed him every day. But anyway, he, he drank the Budweiser. And he died of kidney failure. But he did live 13 years. But that just uh, crushed me, man, when that happened. And then, uh, I'm just trying to tell y'all that, and I did never give him dental care. I never did give him heartworm medicine. I never, never give him vaccines. I never did give him exercise. Of course, he had plenty of exercise. Anyway, uh, uh, and I didn't, uh, and I didn't care. I just fed the dogs. I just kept. The, I'd pour the dog food back there. I just cut, lay it on the ground, and cut it open. And you know, he was a little overweight at the time. You know, when he when he passed. But uh, so he passed on, man. And uh, I had him cremated because I couldn't stand to think of him in the ground with all them bugs crawling in and out of him. And I wanted to be with him for the rest of his life because. You know, because he was a very special dog to me. And then the second dog that I got, his name was Booger. When I first got that dog, he was a puppy. And uh, I left him pinned up all the time. He only got to play with uh, my dog. I never did take him to dog parks and walks and this, that, and the other. And uh, one day he just snapped, man. He started tearing the hell out of my Border Collie. And he grew up with that Border Collie when he was a puppy. And the Border Collie was full grown. And he just got tired of having the aggression. You know, he got tired of being dominated. And he just finally snapped like a twig. And uh, I couldn't trust that dog around no one, man. For for such a loving dog and, and gentle towards me. Uh, 
he sure didn't like uh, uh he, he was very he would make a decision on somebody too and t people told me uh, trust your dog's decision because he, he most of the time if he growls at somebody that you let in your home you can't trust that person and it came out to be true but uh anyway uh i had him cremated when he passed away and i and i regret that i never did take him to dog parks and i never did give him exercise and i never did uh give him any uh i never did give him any um any kind of treatment at all i just let come here boy you can't go in there come here come here baby you can't go in there it's not time to go in go play go potty go out there and go potty baby it's all right yeah that's my baby boy that's a gentle dog here he's such a sissy he whines all the time when i'm not around god i spoil him with love <laughs> This is one of the this is the best dog that I've ever had right here. His name, his name's Toothless. I named him after a after a drag a, a cartoon dragon show. I think it's Escape uh, How to Train Your Dragon. But uh, he's a special dog to me. Go go play, baby. Go play. Anyway, Booger died of uh, prostate cancer. And it's because I never had him checked. I never got him uh, regular checks up. I never gave him any vaccines. And he was mean as hell, because I never did uh, do anything special with him, you know, and, and teach him to be gentle. But anyways, I, I want to let y'all know that. And this dog here, this dog here is so special to me, man. He is really special to me a lot. And the thing about having a pit bull is you, you you have to you have to teach them to be gentle man because they're a killing machine they're a killing machine and they could hurt people man and you got to teach them to be respectful around other dogs you got to teach them that because they have the ability to crush bones i'll show you it's not baby he's a very gentle dog very well mannered and I love him to death. I love that dog with all my heart. I will tell you this, that through the years I've had three three dogs in my whole life, man, and the other two I had cremated, and I'm gonna have him cremated. But it's very hard, very hard to watch them pass, man. Man, it's very, it is so hard to watch them dogs pass, and, and you're going to outlive them. They're not like the bird I have. He's going to outlive us. We can love him with all our heart and not worry about suffering emotionally or mentally or anything, but when he passes, I don't know. I think this might be my last dog because he's my best buddy, man. I spoil him. I spoil him with love so much. That's another thing. Don't overdo it on the love. I've given this dog so much love anytime he hears my voice. If he's in the bedroom sleeping with my wife or something, he will just... <laughs> he just can't stand not being around me. And it, to the point where I can't even hardly bring him at work. I try to bring him to work with me. He loves to go bye-bye. He'll stay in the truck. He'll watch the truck. I can leave the windows down. He will watch the truck for me. And uh, he's he, he, he does use his... Uh, growling abilities whenever somebody comes to the truck and they and he and i'm not standing around he will let them know hey man <clears throat> back off but he doesn't hurt anybody or anything now the other two dogs that i had especially booger uh my son got a hold of a cat one time i'm just telling you all these things so you can so you can help yourselves and you won't lose your dog but one time uh i was in the other room and all of a sudden i hear my two-year-old son he's 15 now but my two year no, he was like four years old. I heard him start crying all of a sudden. And I feared the worst because I knew my pit bull was in there. And he had bit my son. We rushed him to the hospital. And I didn't want the cops taking my dogs to put him down. I wanted to put him down myself. So I lied to him a little bit. And I said, hey, man, we was walking inside the house and a stray dog came up. And uh, he bit him and then he ran away. So... To not to protect my dog i was gonna i was gonna i had called my dad and said dad get your 357 ready because i'm fixing to go leave the hospital here in a second and uh i'm fixing to go put my dog down because i didn't want him hurting no one else i, I got tired of sheltering him i never could let him around anybody i couldn't let him in public i didn't now i thought i couldn't trust him around my children but 
turns to find out when they started stitching my my son up he, he started crying please please i won't put the kitty in the dog's face i promise stop it hurt well the dog wasn't totally in the wrong and i let him i let him die of natural causes or prostate cancer he finally died at the age of 13 that one lived to, to be 13 too so i got lucky that they lived long but you know uh you can't trust you can't trust a pit bull you, you can trust them so far but don't that that dog can make a decision on his own that will change that will alter your life that will alter your family's life completely it's not that pit bulls are are an, they're not mean people teach them to be mean my other pit bull, yeah, he would he he didn't like the thing with another male dog, man. That dude, he would uh, he would go barreling out of the house, and and he would find the nearest male dog he could find. Sometimes he'd hop a fence to get next to one, and it's like, if you could put words to it, it was like he'd be sitting there just wagging his tail, just chilling out with his buddy there. It looked like they were getting along great, and then the closer and closer I got, it happened like four times. And, and if you could put words for it, he would look at that dog and wag his tail and say, yeah. Yeah, that's my that's my master there. And when he gets close enough to come and try to get me, I'm ripping you a new one. And I, it, man, it took oh, it's, it's so hard to get a pit bull off of another dog or unlock his jaw. You can't. It, you, you can choke him. You can grab it. You can you can try to put your fingers in, into the lock teeth and everything. Is <laughs> you got a damn near find. You got to find a breaking stick. So uh, if you do have a pit bull and you're leery about it and everything, and I'm just telling you these things, man. Pit bulls. They're not a mean breed unless you make them mean or unless you don't spend time with them. Unless you don't take them out into the public. This dog, I take him out in the parks. I take him out in the public. I teach him, I teach him how to interact with people. People want to pet him all the time. And he's fine. But I went overboard with it. I loved him too much. Man, I can't even take him to work with me now because everybody at work says, Hey. You gotta take that dog home. He's sissy. That's the biggest sissiest dog I've ever. That's the biggest sissy pit bull I ever had. I said, well, it's better to have a sissy pit bull than one that bites everybody or tears up other animals or that's vicious. That you gotta shelter its whole life or you gotta be leery. But anyway, it's not true that pit bulls are. You know, they're not mean dogs. It's all in how the owner raises them. This dog here is beautiful. And I love him with all my heart. I think it might be the last one I have. And I'm having him cremated as well. I know you might think this is stupid. But uh, my other two dogs, when I get my kid a chance to pull them out of storage because somebody stole the boxes, I had them cremated and somebody left the ashes. Uh, you know, I, left all, I moved to Louisiana for a little while to, let, to watch my mom pass away. And then I moved back to Texas. But while I was up there living with somebody that I thought was a true friend, he went through all my things. And it was because if you lay with dogs, you're going to get fleas. If you associate with a certain group of people, if you, start, if you associate with party people that are always <coughs> or doing whatever they do to buzz themselves up, nine times out of ten, those kind of people are not ones you want to trust. I thought I could trust this dude unconditionally, man. He went through all my things. He found some pictures of my wife that was, uh, you know, my personal pictures, if you know what I mean, with my wife. And uh, they wasn't with me and her, they were just of her. She was beautiful when she was uh, a young girl and I just loved it. I wanted to take some pictures to remember that for the rest of my life. And uh, he stole my wife's pictures. He stole uh, her mom's deceased leather jacket, a bunch of clothes, and he stole my dog's boxes. He left the ashes there. And he delivered all my stuff to my house. And when I when I got home that day after work, I said, "Hey, man, I said, where the is the rest of my stuff?" He goes, "I don't know what you're talking about." I said, "My wife's pictures are gone. My dog's boxes are gone." I said, "I really wish you would have found some other uh, a box to to put your stash in. I know they're neat boxes, and it does say Bud on the top of it. Maybe that's why they stole it. Is because it said Bud in gold letters. It was a." It was a wooden box and it had a, a 24 karat gold lettering across the top that said bud and uh that's probably why i stole it he thought that's be cool man i'm gonna keep this and keep my buds in there so anyways uh there's the story man and i just wanted to share that with you it's another part and piece of my life 
But anyway, I'm going to take those ashes when I get my stuff out of storage. When we finally get this apartment, I'm going to come to, and I'm going to I'm going to uh, put them in a tube, and I'm going to you know how you know you got the visors in my '72 Chevy truck or the 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 window or the mirror. I'm going to mix him up in some clear paint, you know, when I shoot my truck, and I'm going to spray him. I'm going to spray him on the inside of that truck. I'm going to blow some ashes off into places that you can't get. There's no way you could get it cleaned out. Even I don't care if you, you'd have to cut the thing in pieces to get it behind the louvers where the louvers bolt up to the, to the, to the, you know, right above the windshield there. Those little triangle things. You can take it out. There's a little hole there. I'm gonna blow some ashes up in there. I'm gonna blow some ashes in another one. I'm gonna blow some ashes in the rear view light. You know where the light goes, the dome light goes, because there's no way for them people, to, to, for anybody to get in there. No matter who owns the truck later on that. And then I'm gonna keep the truck until I pass on, and I'm gonna have the same thing done with my ashes. So no matter what, me and my dog, my dogs, we're going to get to ride around in a 72 Chevy truck for as long as that 72 Chevy truck lives. And I'm pretty sure that 72 Chevy truck will live forever. As good of a condition it is, not unless it gets totaled somewhere. And well, sometimes all good things come to an end. But at least uh, I got to ride with my dogs through my son or maybe his grandkids and we're, I, I want them just I want to keep that truck in the family I want it to be passed down to the generations in my family and I hope that that happens because I would just love to ride around in, in that truck with my dogs forever and that's my story man I miss those dogs so much it's very hard it's very hard to watch a dog go that you really love a lot each and all of them that I've had, you know, this is the third one, and I don't think I'm going to get another one, because this one I've showed so much love. I've attached my soul to him so much more stronger, because I've lost two others, and two others I really didn't care about. Those two others I didn't exercise. I didn't give it vaccines. I didn't take care of it as much as I do now this one. This one I take good care of him. I love him so much. You're my best friend, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to outlive you. He is very gentle, man. He's very gentle around kids. But still, I don't trust I don't trust a dog that has the ability to hurt something. Yeah, I know. I don't trust uh I wouldn't trust any pit bull around children at all. <clears throat> because the child might do something to irritate him and he might lash out at him and you'll find you'll find yourself uh between a rock and a hard spot there people yeah, that's my baby mm. anyway say goodbye toothless say goodbye <laughs> quit helping me man get off me <laughs> he likes to hump all the time i don't know i guess that he loves me a lot lot <laughs> bye bye Peace out.